Hey everyone, in this anatomy lesson, I'm gonna cover the femur bone, which is the only bone that makes up the thigh of the leg. In fact, the word femur comes from a Latin word that literally means thigh. Now this bone is part of your appendicular skeleton, and anatomists classify this as a long bone, which kind of makes sense because this bone also happens to be the longest, the biggest, and the strongest bone in the human skeleton. So let's take a look at the femur bone. First, we have this large ball-like structure on the superior portion of the femur, which is called the head. Now, why does it have this ball shape? Well, it's gonna form a ball and socket synovial joint with the acetabulum of the hip bone. Next, you'll notice this tiny pit on the head of the femur called the fovea capitis. And this allows for the attachment of a ligament called the ligament of the head of the femur. Hey, at least you won't forget where that one's located. And this ligament attaches to the sides of the acetabular notch. Next, we have the neck of the femur, which attaches the head to the shaft. And it's gonna be surrounded by the joint capsule of the hip. Next, you'll notice two trochanters, which is just an irregular bony protuberance on the femur here. And the greater trochanter is gonna be that larger bony process, hence the word greater and it's located laterally on the femur and allows for the attachments of muscles such as the piriformis, gluteus medius, gluteus minimus, and vastus lateralis. And the greater trochanter can be felt on the lateral side of the thigh near the hip, and it serves as a landmark when fitting a patient for a cane, and it also is a site that you'll want to monitor for bed sores or pressure ulcers when a patient is lying on their side for an extended period. The lesser trochanter is smaller and located more medially on the posterior region of the femur, and it allows for the attachment of muscles as well. The intertrochanteric line connects the trochanters on the anterior side of the femur, and it allows for the attachment of the joint capsule of the hip as well as the iliofemoral ligament. The intertrochanteric crest is a ridge that connects the greater and lesser trochanter on the posterior side of the femur, and it allows for the attachment of the quadratus femoris. Next, you'll notice this rough ridged line below the intertrochanteric crest, which is called the gluteal tuberosity. And as the name suggests, this is gonna allow for the attachment of the gluteus maximus muscle, which is your butt muscle. And that will help you remember that this gluteal tuberosity is gonna be on the posterior side of the femur because your rear end is on the posterior side. Now the rough line continues down the posterior side of the shaft of the femur, and it's called the linea aspera, which is a Latin word that literally means rough line. And this allows for the attachment of various muscles. And you'll notice that the linea aspera forks off into a medial and lateral supracondylar lines. And again, this is gonna serve as an attachment points for various muscles. And remember that medial means toward the midline of the body, and lateral means away from the midline of the body, so that will help you keep straight which is the medial and which is the lateral supracondylar line. The lateral supracondylar line is going to extend down toward the lateral epicondyle, which allows for the attachment of the fibular collateral ligament of the knee. And again, the prefix epi means this structure is above, near, or upon that lateral condyle. The medial epicondyle is located above the medial condyle, hence the prefix epi, and it provides attachment of the adductor magnus and gastrocnemius muscles. The lateral and medial condyles are going to articulate or form a joint with the patella and tibia bone of the leg, creating the tibiofemoral joint. Now what is a condyle again? A condyle is just going to be a rounded projection on a bone that's going to form a joint. Next, we have the adductor tubercle, which is a small bump that rests on the top of the medial condyle, which allows for the insertion of the tendon of the adductor magnus. Now, when we look at the anterior or front side of the femur, you'll notice down at the inferior or bottom portion, you have the patellar surface, which is a smooth depression, and that's going to provide articulation with the patella bone, also known as your kneecap bone. And then when we look at the posterior side of the femur, there is a notch separating the medial and lateral condyles, hence the prefix inter, which means between, and condylar, which means condyles. So this is the notch between those condyles, and this provides attachment of the anterior cruciate ligament, or your ACL, 
and the posterior cruciate ligament or PCL. Okay, so that wraps up this anatomy lesson over the femur bone. And we have a free quiz that you can take on our website. You can check out that link in the description below. Also, we have a whole playlist of anatomy videos if you're studying for anatomy, so you might wanna check that out. Thank you so much for watching and please subscribe.